Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the solution to the problem that I gave you earlier this week on a Power Query challenge. Now, if by chance you're watching this video first, I suggest you take a look at that video to understand what problem did I give you. Of course, solve it and then come back and take a look at this video to understand what is the solution to the problem that I gave you earlier this week. All right, first off, thanks so much for everybody who participated in this Power Query challenge. Almost everybody who commented on the blog or on the YouTube channel did get the answer right. Uh, people essentially followed two broad approaches to solve this problem and I'm going to discuss both these approaches and alongside I'm also going to discuss my approach to solve this problem. Let's just get started. All right, let's just discuss solution number one. So most people have done it in this way, which is where they write an if condition and they find the latest date against every single student and then compare that latest date to each and every date of that student and see if that date is matching the latest date or not. If that is matching, they keep the row. If that is not matching, they remove that row. Why don't we take a look at the steps as to how this is done? So in the source step, of course, I have the entire data. Then I actually group the data and against the name of the student, I actually find the latest date. I also have all the rows captured as a table, which is where I have all the details of that student captured in a table underneath. Now, once I expand this all rows table, I expand the test attempt date and I also get the score uh, of that particular student. Now that I have two columns, the latest date and the actual test attempt date, I can actually write an if statement comparing these two columns. If this value is equal to this value, uh, I keep that row. If this value is not equal, I remove that row. So I write a simple if condition and wherever the if condition is giving me one, which is where the date is equal to the max date, I keep that row. Otherwise, I remove that row. I filter out all the null values and remove the junk columns. It's a very simple, clean way of solving this problem. I really like this approach for everybody who solved this problem in this manner. All right, let's just talk about solution number two. So some of you took a slightly different approach and solved this problem using VLOOKUP, which is nothing but a left outer join. Now, take a look at this series of steps here. So we have the source step, which is where the entire data has been loaded. In step number two, I do the same thing that I did it earlier, which is where I have the name of the student. Against the name of the student, I have the latest test date, which is, has been grouped, and then the entire set of rows that belong to that particular student. Now that we have the name of the student and the latest date, I can actually do a VLOOKUP by concatenating the name and the latest date and I can go find in the previous step which is the source step that means where do you actually find the same name and the latest date and if you find it keep those rows now in the third step which is nothing but a VLOOKUP I actually write a VLOOKUP between the group rows as well as the source step and this is the result of the VLOOKUP which is where if it finds two rows it returns me two rows if it finds one row it just returns me one row containing the concatenated fields which is the name and the latest date now I can actually expand this particular table that has been created, which is the result of VLOOKUP, and I get all the scores that belong to the student and on the latest date. All that I have to do is remove this column and this is done. The only thing that I suspect with this problem is that because you're using a left out join, this might slow down the query a little bit, but if it works, it just works. That's a great solution as well. All right, finally, let's just take a look at my solution. Now, one could argue that my solution is slightly more complicated than what people have actually posted in comments on the blog. I think that's true, but the application of my solution, you can actually apply to solving other challenging problems in Power Query. So why don't you take a look at my solution and then decide it for yourself? So what I've done is I've actually done two steps already. So the first step is the source step, which is where I grab the data in Excel and put it into Power Query. The next step that I have done is I've actually grouped the rows and I have kept the name of the student I've kept the maximum date or the latest date of that particular student as a calculated column and I have also kept the all data column which is where the entire data is there for every single student as a little table. Now what I'd like to do is the idea is that instead of expanding this column and then writing an if or doing a VLOOKUP I would like to apply a filter to this table only which is as of now and captured in a single cell or closed in a single cell and only keep those rows that actually match this state so essentially i'm trying to compare the outside date which is in the outside table to the date inside of this table which is captured inside a single cell and then just keep the rows which actually match the date of the outside table so how do i actually do that how do i actually grab this value of the date column which is kept outside in the table and kind of compare it with all the dates in this table and match it again these two dates and then keep these two rows of the table only. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the add columns tab and create a custom column. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a, a formula, an M function that allows me to filter a table. So I'm just going to write table dot select rows. And you can see that there is a function called table dot select rows. And as the first part of the table dot select rows, you have to input the name of the table. Which table are you trying to filter? So I'm trying to filter every single table in this particular column. And I'm just going to write the table name, which is all data. So all data is the name of the column. And in that column, we have four tables, which is where I'd like to apply the filter. Now let's just say that what is the filter that I'd like to apply? I'd like to apply a filter, which is where I'd like to capture the date outside, which is the date column, every single date here in this particular column and match it against this particular test attempt date in the table, which has been captured inside of the single cell. So I'll declare a small variable. The variable will allow me to go capture this particular column and all the dates inside of this particular column. So let's just declare a variable called inner table, which is the table inside of uh, the all data column. And let's just make it as a function. So equals to sign and the greater than sign it's called a rocket symbol. And once I declare the variable, I will now be able to refer to this variable. So I will say inner table that shows up in the formula bar. And inside of the inner table, I can actually go and select the date column. Now, when I say inner table date column, I'm actually referring to the test attempt date, but the name of the column should be correct. So it should not be the date column. It should actually be the test attempt date. So I'm just going to maybe write this as a test attempt date. All right. Now this test attempt date should actually be equal to this date the name of this column is the plain date column. So I will write date and I'll kind of close the bracket. This actually completes my formula. I'm just going to say, okay, and let's just see what do we get? So we get a table here and I'm just going to kind of maybe click on the side of the table and you can see this table is now filtered to only those rows, which actually met my condition. And my condition was to compare this date with the date inside of uh, this particular column and keep the matching only. So there were two matching seven and seven matching with the seven here. And that is the table that I have. Now, that's it. Once I have the table, all that I can do is extract the so scores against this particular table. I can also convert this table into a list. So what I can do is I can just go back to the gear option here. And I can say that this entire formula delivers me a table. And from this table, I want to just have one column, which is the score column. And that's all that I will say. And I'm just going to say, okay, and this actually becomes a list. And if I just click on the side of the list, you can see that I have just two scores and I can just expand this list and I can see the expand it to the new rows, say, okay. And that is the column that I get. I can simply get rid of the old data column and certainly rename this and we are good to go. So that was the way in which I solved the problem, get the date from the outside table, compare it to the date inside of the table. You can certainly argue it's a slightly more trickier method than writing a simple if or a nested join. But yeah, that was the way that I actually solved this particular problem. All right, that was all about it. Thank you so much for participating in this little Power Query challenge. A big shout out to Jijo who participated here. Ravi actually posted a correct solution. Almost everybody who participated posted a correct solution. Isidre, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Vivek posted a good solution. Shoeb, Subodh, pretty good solution. Nitin, Steve actually posted a pretty good solution. So you can actually take a look at all of these solutions. My solutions are just the essence of what everybody has posted alongside the solution that I have actually given to you. You can actually take a look. As a side reminder, I also have a course on Power Query, which is where I teach Power Query right from scratch and build you up to a level where you can write sophisticated queries to automate a bunch of tasks in Excel or in Power BI. You should actually check it out if you like to learn Power Query from me. Thanks so much for watching this. If you have any questions, please do comment in the comment section and I'll be glad to help. Thanks once again and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.